on the 1st of July 1934 inside of a prison cell in the notorious Nazi lockup of Stadelheim prison. Hitler's close friend had a choice. Left in front of him was a pistol with one single cartridge inside of it and he was given 10 minutes to bring his life to an end. If he could not do this, he was told he would be shot by a firing squad or a sole executioner. This man was Ernst Röhm, a very senior member of the Nazi party who was very close to the dictator Hitler and he was the head of the SA, the brown shirts, who became a very powerful bunch of paramilitary fighters. There had been once calls for the SA to replace the German army, but Ernst Röhm was a man who flew too close to the sun, and his power and influence rivalled Hitler's, and this led many to consider whether a coup could ever occur to replace Hitler with Röhm. Many members of the SA were more loyal to Röhm than the dictator, and with this Hitler then ordered the slaughter of his former best friend and powerful ally. The only man in Nazi Germany who was allowed to call Hitler Adi, a personal nickname, was given an ultimatum which around every corner was death. Welcome to the Untold Past. Today we look at the execution of Ernst Röhm and as always to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Ernst Röhm was born in November 1887 inside of Munich and he would serve inside of the German military during the First World War. He rose throughout the various ranks and gained many different promotions, but during the conflict he actually became very sick. Firstly, he suffered a facial injury earlier in the conflict, which led to him being very scarred on his face, and then years later he sustained a serious chest wound. But then in autumn 1918 he contracted Spanish flu, which was causing chaos across Europe, and many of the doctors believed that Rome would die from this, but he managed to recover following a long period of convalescing. Ernst Röhm in 1919, following continuing his career in the Reichswehr, joined the German Workers' Party, which later transitioned to become the Nazi Party. When he joined, it would be not long before he became very good friends with the man who would later become known as the Führer of Nazi Germany, Adolf Hitler, and the pair got on very well. Hitler viewed Röhm as a key ally, and he was seen as someone who could galvanise the military and army, and also right-wing paramilitary groups, and Röhm would later act as an intermediary between them. He was inside the heart of the Nazi party from the very beginning, and during the Munich Putsch, he led what was known as the Reichskriegflager, and he was the one who would announce the revolution to the SA members and his forces, who were then inside of Munich bear arms and take control of the city. Ernst Röhm did get a call to say that the revolution was in full swing, and Hitler had stated this, and he, Röhm, led 2,000 men to the war ministry, where they occupied this for 24 hours. But the Munich Putsch would end in bloodshed for Hitler, as there was a shootout with police close to the Feldherrnhalle, and 14 Nazis were killed, and senior members such as Hermann Göring were even injured in this. But Ernst Röhm, for his involvement in the failed revolution, was sentenced to 15 months in prison, but he was actually placed on probation and he never really served a day in prison for his actions, which were considered treasonous. He could very easily have been executed for this, but he escaped very little punishment. Ernst Röhm remained involved in politics and he became a deputy inside of the Reichstag, but whilst his friend Hitler was locked up inside of Landsberg prison, Röhm was involved in the creation of the Frontbahn, which was a variation of a group like the SA. Hitler was not ultimately keen, and he believed this would cause further problems for him down the line. But then in August 1930, Hitler asked Ernst Röhm to leave a job he had taken. Röhm was serving as an advisor for the Bolivian army, and he returned to Germany, and Röhm returned as the chief of staff for the SA. He brought in fresh new ideas, and also restructured the group's leadership, and the SA's membership rose into the millions. Their aim was to protect high-profile Nazi leaders at rallies and meetings, and then they were to disrupt political meetings, but they were later usurped in their opinion by Hitler, by the SS, which would be led by Heinrich Himmler. The SA began to develop a reputation for itself, for violence and brutality, as well as fuggish behaviour. The members disrupted rival political party meetings, and they had battles in the streets with communists, but Röhm had the group organised well, and he remained close by Hitler's side. Röhm himself was a homosexual, and some inside of the Nazi party believed this would become a problem for the Nazis and Hitler, and he was also attacked for his sexuality 
by a number of newspapers. But Hitler remained by his side and supported him, and as mentioned he was the only Nazi member who could refer to Hitler by his first name, Adolf, or by the shortened version, Adi. The SA were a paramilitary group who were there to guard the policies of the Nazi party in a sense, but Hitler then realised that he could not take power in Germany by force, and he had to use politics to do this. This meant that the SA now acted as a strain on his party, and their portrayal to the voters was negative, and their membership at the time was around 3 million, but a large percentage of these men were actually more loyal to Ernst Röhm than Hitler, and this acted as a huge problem. The potential of a union between the military and the SA also cast Röhm in a bad light, and the army believed the SA were just a rowdy mob, and they had no tradition or history. Hitler then stepped in, and he decided to get rid of the SA's power, and a number of his inner circle then spoke to Hitler, and asked him to move against Röhm, as he was too powerful. Because of this, a large purge was ordered, and this became known as the Night of the Long Knives. In a documentation that was produced, it alleged that Röhm was a traitor, and that he had been allegedly paid a huge sum of money to overthrow Hitler by the French. This was of course false, and was orchestrated by Heinrich Himmler and Reinhard Heydrich, and the SS leaders were privy to this information, and then many SA members were targeted for arrest, and then subsequent execution. Hitler involved the army, and Röhm was then expelled from the German Officers' League, and he ordered the SA hierarchy to meet with him on the 30th of June at 11am. But before he had time to conduct this meeting, a huge number of police officers, as well as members of the SS, arrived with Hitler at a hotel where Röhm was staying. He was actually arrested in bed, and a number of other SA members were seized from their rooms, and Hitler turned Röhm over to the Gestapo agents. But this was the night of the long knives, as many SA members were executed and were shot. Hitler being close with Röhm had believed that he could pardon the head of the group, and he claimed that the SA had been undisciplined, and that there had been the worst treachery committed in history by them. Many celebrated that Hitler had ordered these purges, and they believed they were executing traitors among the Reich. But the reality of this was that a huge amount of slaughter occurred. Goebbels ordered the final parts of the purge, and he telephoned Hermann Göring in Berlin with a code word that prepared groups of execution squads to head to Stadelheim prison to prepare for the shooting of many SA members. But inside of Stadelheim was also Ernst Röhm, and Hitler did not necessarily want to order his execution. It was similar to how Henry VIII was hesitant to order the execution of his chief minister Thomas Cromwell during the Tudor period, but he was then finally convinced to do so. On the 1st of July 1934, inside of a prison's chamber in Stadelheim, Rome was visited by two SS men, Theodor Eicher and Michael Lippert. The pair entered his cell, and they spoke to Rome, and he was given a choice, either to end his own life with a pistol shot, or a group of executioners would do it for him. The SS officers left him with a loaded Browning pistol, with one bullet in the gun, and Rome claimed that, let Adolf do it if I'm going to be killed. For the next ten minutes there was complete silence, and Eicher and Lippert then went back into the cell at ten to three in the afternoon. They found Ernst Röhm stood defiantly in the middle of his prison cell, with his chest puffed out and shirtless. They both pulled out their weapons, and Röhm was then shot dead. It was stated that he cried out for Hitler as he fell to the floor dying, and Goebbels claimed in his diary later that, It is difficult, but cannot be avoided. There must be peace. Hitler suffers greatly, alluding to the heartbreak, ordering Rome's execution caused Hitler. But the Night of the Long Knives in its purge led to the deaths of more than 200 people, and Ernst Rome's execution was one that Hitler had pondered on for some time, and he may have deeply regretted it. He was Hitler's closest friend, and a man who, despite his lifestyle, was very high up in the dictator's affections. He was a loyal follower of Hitler, and he became too powerful, and he was a man who was advocating his SA to carry out violent attacks on enemies, and because of this he was seen as someone who needed dealing with. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.